Malaria is probably the most climate sensitive uh, vector borne disease. And many components of the disease are climate sensitive. Uh, let's start with the mosquitoes. The uh, mosquito larvae are highly sensitive to climate uh, temperature differences. Now the warmer it is, the faster they grow and become adults. Once they come out as adults, they need to feed on blood and their feeding frequency on human beings is completely temperature dependent. The warmer it is, the more the mosquitoes need to take a blood meal because apparently they lose water and they need to replenish and therefore they, uh, they, when they feed more, they take more parasites from the human blood and also transmit uh, fresh parasites to human beings. Now, with regard to the parasite, uh, in the mosquito, it is also very sensitive to temperature, uh, such that if uh, it's warmer, uh, the parasite grows much, much faster. In fact, it's not a linear process, it's what we call an exponential process. So very small differences in temperature can cause a huge difference in the developmental time of, of uh, the parasite. Now, uh, then we have rainfall itself, uh, which uh, provides breeding habitats for mosquitoes. When it's dry, the mosquitoes breed in uh, rivers and streams, but when it rains, uh, you get uh, temporary breeding habitats, and this can increase by a factor of three to five, so that increases mosquito populations and therefore you're getting uh, minimal mosquitoes biting people more frequently and the parasites developing much faster. And therefore you end up with very many cases of malaria. When you get epidemics, uh, malaria cases can increase by anything between 100 to 700%. And in the areas these epidemics occur, people are not very immune to the disease because the disease is rare there. And when they get the disease, it comes in a severe form uh, sleep or malaria uh, with all kinds of complications, high mobility and high mortality. So the, the disease is alarming and it causes huge uh, health uh, implications and disasters. So it is necessary to try and deal with this uh, threat in a manner that gives you an opportunity to intervene and prevent the event from uh, occurring. So. In, uh, during the 1997-98 El Nino event, the National Oceanic and At Atmospheric Administration was very concerned uh, because there was a very strong uh, signal from the Pacific sea surface temperatures. There was going to be a very big uh, El Nino, probably one that had never seen, been seen before. And they knew that uh, a lot of disease epidemics such as cholera, malaria, uh, uh, Rift Valley fever were associated with the climate variability. And usually during El, El Ninos, you have excess rainfall, and it's also uh, much, much warmer than uh, during normal weather. So uh, we had been doing some uh, uh, research using math mathematical models, and uh, the mathematical models were showing that if you have increased temperature and rainfall, malaria uh, 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 would increase. So uh, we then started looking at the uh, uh, old records of rainfall and temperature and seeing uh, if they were associated with malaria cases in hospitals. And in fact, we found that there was a very strong association between these events and disease. So uh, we then tried to develop uh, a way of forecasting the disease using uh, climate data. And so we developed a special program, which is very, very unusual. It's not a statistical uh, 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 approach. It is what we call a process-based approach, where we found, uh, determined certain thresholds that needed to be exceeded in terms of temperature and in terms of rainfall. And once this exceeded, we were very sure that there would be uh, an outbreak. And uh, uh, so we did the pro programming in uh, Microsoft Excel uh, it, that involves what we call logic formulas. It's a kind of intelligent system that you program in Excel. And if uh, these variables are exceeded, that is temperature or rainfall exceeded, then it will report that there's a, is a risk. And then we also quantify the risk, how big is the risk or how small is the risk. So uh, then we developed the, the so-called model for early epidemic prediction. 
what they had before was early epidemic detection. Uh, that meant that you could, you could only detect the epidemic when the epidemic was already going on and you had absolutely no opportunity to intervene and prevent uh, the epidemic. But with the new system, we could see the first signal uh, up to three to four months before the event occurred. That was actually a spike in uh, temperatures. And then shortly after that, uh, there will be rainfall. We should expand the breeding habitats for mosquitoes. And about one to two months thereafter, you would get explosive epidemics. So this system we developed was able to go through the data, walk through the data, and identify those climatic conditions that would, two to three months ahead of time, precipitate an epidemic. The model is built to focus to predict epidemics in areas of unstable malaria transmission in the highlands, where the disease is uh, controlled by temperatures. Uh, so it can work in other areas where temperature is the main controlling factor for the disease or the main limiting factor for the disease, such as you know, Rwanda, Burundi, Ethiopia, parts of Congo. As, as far as the, it's a highland area where temperature is a controlling factor, it should be uh, uh, useful. Now we have a very rational and scientific way of predicting or forecasting the epidemic. Furthermore, the models have been automated, such that all you need to do is to plug in the data, and it, it, it has a graph output, it draws the graph as you go along, and you can have a visual view of what's going on, which is easily understandable by the people involved in public health. And, and now uh, they have reasonable grounds to take action. We are now much more prepared to deal with it because we can detect it and, and then we can intervene. And in certain communities, you are having uh, uh, cases increase by up to 700%. Uh, we had mortality rates of over 10%. In one case, we found a family that had been completely wiped out by these epidemics. Uh, these, these are very worrying uh, sort of events. But we hope that in the coming years, we can stop it because now we have a tool.